My name is Eric Johnson. I'm the production manager here at the Machine Shops. Uh, I have five supervisors under me, and I also have about 25 direct reports. Hi, my name is Fred Chirpik. Uh, I'm a supervisor in the ProtoTrack department. We actually run ProtoTracks, and they do call it the prototype department because we make one or two pieces until they find out that they work accordingly, and then they will go into mass production. My name is Mike Grassis. Um, I'm the operations manager responsible for running a 24-hour-a-day, seven-day-a-week operation. We're in three physically separate buildings, but in total we have about 11 or 12,000 square feet of operation with uh, about 50 or so machine tools. So this is a, another interesting part in terms of comparing conventional machining to laser cutting. We call it a dog bone, that's just a nickname for it. But it's a pretty, it's a very, very small part. Don't let the print deceive you. This is very, very tiny. It's a stainless steel part with very small features in it. I don't know if the camera can actually pick this up, but there is like a quarter of a millimeter radius in the corners of this part. You picture the tool that you would need conventionally, you know, being a little bit bigger than a, like a human hair made out of cutting steel. The potential for breaking those things uh, exists all the time. In machining process, you'd wax this plate down to cut it. It's too thin to hold in the vise. With small end mills like that, and the tough material of stainless, you cannot cut this in a very fast manner. It's time consuming. So eventually we bought uh, an IPG laser cube, and now these thin parts take literally seconds to make. I mean, it's so fast, it's not even funny. And there's absolutely no vibration issues, there's nothing. And the speed of the laser is incredible. In the laser cube, it's much faster. We have no tool breakage in the laser cube. We just don't make one or two of these parts at a time. We make 1,500 at a whack, 1,000 at a whack. The laser beam has a, has a diameter of about five thousandths, which is much less than uh, what's needed. Uh, you know, you can drill any hole down to four or five thousandths of an inch Picture yourself in a prototrack trying to make these versus in a laser cube. I can produce a hundred of these in a laser cube in a, probably an hour's time. To do a hundred in a prototrack would probably take me a couple of days. Some of our engineers next door are actually starting to design things with that in mind. Because of our backlog and turning and milling is so high, they say, well, if we can design this with no milled features, we can get it tomorrow. It's worked so well for us, we actually purchased a second one because our volume of work increased when all the engineers found out how much or what type of work we can do. Sheet metal pots that used to get sent out are now produced here. I think uh, from, a, from a performance perspective, we were really, really impressed with that process and the speed to go from uh, installation to set up and run was excellent. And we do amaze a lot of people from outside the organization with what we're able to accomplish. So that's a great feeling at the end of the day.